Hello, I'm Jeff Armstrong and if you like these videos please subscribe to my channel by selecting the subscribe button below. There are many other videos in my channel and will be in the future. This video is going to be about adding a column to the new SharePoint document library in 2016 and then beginning to understand how that column plays a part in the modified view of the document library in SharePoint 2016 and then we're really going to elude from there into a new video about managing views and how views play a part in the whole overall document library and, and managing what people can see and, and begin to move forward into automation. Now when I began to think about why we would need this video on how to add a column um, I started to begin to think about the reasons why you would want to add a column to a document library and I want these videos to be more than just let me show you how to put the jigsaw pieces together with SharePoint it's, it's more about patterns and the reason why you need to do things or you'd want to do things SharePoint's very good and many of the videos out there are very good at showing you all the individual pieces and all the individual tools but they're not very good Good at actually showing you how you would put them all together to work in unison to bring you together the pattern what I describe as the pattern and certainly Microsoft talks about patterns that would create rich functional applications within your SharePoint environment and that really is the end goal once you've learned about all the individual components within SharePoint. The other problem with SharePoint is it's highly complex. There's a, there are thousands of different pieces and in order to use it effectively you need to have an overall knowledge of most of those pieces so it makes it quite complicated. So the objective here is to show you those pieces and then to begin to put it together with you to show you how these patterns are formed. So why would you want to add a new column to a document library in SharePoint 2016. I can understand if you've got a custom list. Custom lists are hold, usually used to hold data and that data usually isn't document based and therefore custom columns and, and default columns that SharePoint comes with would be you wouldn't use them normally but why would you add a column into the document library? And I think what's important to understand here is if you wanted an approval process, then generally speaking, you will use the approval workflow and therefore you won't need to add a custom column in because as you switch on the workflow, you would get those content types deployed by SharePoint that would provide you with all the necessary columns needed to implement that. If you were going to add tagging, i.e. taxonomy, to these documents, then you would use the dip in the document interface when you first upload it. You would maybe use the metadata columns that come with SharePoint. And you might even use the enterprise keyword for folksonomy to allow you to tag and using the term store within SharePoint to implement those tags. So in that scenario, um, you would be adding some columns, but they would be metadata columns. And as I said, they plug into the term store and the document information panel, the dip in uh, Office 365 and in Word um, and, and in Excel and, and in PDFs um, and th they require further knowledge about how how those other systems those other components of the functionality work such as the term storm will certainly get into that in later videos so it dawned on me one of the reasons you might want to add a new column is because you 
let's say these were invoices or let's say these were sales reports and they had a value, a total sum attached to them contained within the report and you wanted to sum up as an example what that quarter was worth or what that half year was worth or what the total year was worth or what a particular person um, who has been adding sales reports every month, what their quarter might be worth. Now, in those scenarios, you could use certainly the document information panel in Word to ensure that the user adds those values. And then you could input those values automatically as the document's uploaded into that column and then use the sum function here to sum that up for you. So let's have a bit of a look about how we might do that and certainly how it might automate for us. It's worth noting here that I also believe that some of this will be removed in the future using Power BI as Power BI really switches on. Um, but at the moment, um, let's entertain the notion that we want to be able to view this data in the document library uh, because that's where we're comfortable. So if we go into library settings, we notice here that we've got this column section and we can click here and say, I want to create a column. And here we could type in um, a name. Now it's also worth noting that there are some reserved names, so you can't have two columns named the same in the document library. And when you get into content types, it gets slightly more complicated. So just just be aware of that. And we we want this to be currency because we're going to sum we're going to sum a total here. And it's always worth putting a description because this later on becomes quite useful when you start looking at columns from a enterprise perspective and it starts to help you understand the context of the column without actually having to go to the library to see what's going on. Required that this column contains information. Let's leave that no for the moment. Let's say that we're not going to enforce unique values because you wouldn't do in this scenario. Set decimal places. Let's set it to two decimal places for argument's sake. Uh, default value is going to be currency. The current format is going to be in pounds. Add to the default view, which means it's going to add it to the the first view that the document library uses and, and this is the all all items or the all document view and let's click OK. So what we should see now is that we get this sales value come out here uh, in the column and if we go back let's just go take a look at what happens when we add that in and we might need to just scroll across so what we're going to do is we're going to go into quick edit and notice that this brings us out into this view and, and what we're going to do here is we're just going to start let's just add some values these are folders so we don't add any values for them so let's say that uh, uh, this one was worth 1500 um, April was worth uh, 1600 let's just fill these in and notice as I'm filling them in it's applying the formatting that we added. So using the quick edit we've been able to very quickly populate that column and now we're going to click done and we're going to notice when we scroll across and in this situation it's misaligned. This is the new document library and it's, it's misaligned the values because it's put the titles in here in the new document library because it's said that the view needs to move across. This is something glitchy with the the new document library view at the moment. We can resolve that though by cutting down the columns. So let's do that. We can let me just see if I can pull this in here and whether that makes any difference to realign it. No. So let's let's manipulate that slightly. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go into the library settings and drop down into all documents and then what we'll see here is notice that the sales value now is here and notice that it is checked so these are all the columns that are available that we could we could display 
in that document library view. And this column here is the one that we added. And you notice that it's checked. Only the checked options are available to see in that particular view. And the reason for that, the reason that it's checked is that we, when we added the column, said add to the default view. So it automatically did this. So what we might want to do here is let's uncheck some of these. Let's take out modified by, checked in comments, checked out. We'll leave the version in maybe. And now let's save that and click OK. So there we go. We know now have, if we bring that across just slightly, we now have that sales value. And that's something obviously that Microsoft will be working on in terms of this view and how that value is displayed when um, when, when we add that column. So that's how to add a column and now if we wanted to sum that column up what we would need to do is we would need to go back into the library settings drop down into all documents and then we would drop down here in to this option which is totals we select the option totals and you see we have this sales value and we can switch this on and say I want you to count sorry I want you to sum the total value of all of these so by selecting that what should happen is in the classic view you would get that sum value come up here now this is the new document library and it's only just recently been released by Microsoft which means that some of the functionality here isn't isn't fully working and it's clear that this some value in this current view isn't working but if we were now to go and go into library settings and go into advanced settings we're going to drop down here and we're going to say I want the classic experience. I'm going to click OK there. Then we're going to drop back into that document library. What you see now is this is the old, old, well, what's called the classic document library view. And here you see here's the sum of all of these documents values added up. And previously I, I did a I added a count value here as well. So this counts the total number here. Effectively it's just counting each one and then and then giving you a total count. So this is the total sum of all of, of all of this. So hopefully that begins to let everyone understand how these uh, adding a custom column to a document library what its purpose would be, why you might want to do that, um, how this could sum it up. Imagine using this with filtered views. You could filter by day, if you filter by week, um, you could filter by folder, you could get the folders giving you a breakdown. So you could get the content of the folder showing you that sum of all the content inside each folder. So you could have each week broken down in, in, that, in that format. So this is just a, an initial introduction to a why you might want to add a custom column to a document library other than the reasons that we've given around it, approved process, tagging, and obviously this one, uh, counting up values of, of, of documents um, and, and how that might be useful. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button below. There'll be many more. If you've got any questions, please ask. I look forward to possibly looking at some real life scenarios with anybody that might need some help. Thank you very much for watching this video.